Authorities in Monterey Park, California, say a 72-year-old man suspected in the deadly mass shooting that left 10 people dead at a dance hall took his own life after the attack. Investigators are still looking for a motive, though, and at least 10 others were injured in the rampage. All right, for more on this, I want to bring in Congresswoman Judy Chu. She's a Democrat representing California's 28th district, which includes Monterey Park. Uh, Congresswoman, thanks so much for joining us. I'm so sorry it's under these conditions, and I'm so sorry we have to keep talking about this in what feels like almost a weekly uh, situation where we're talking about mass shootings in this country. But, but I want to talk to you a little bit about the community you represent how this is affecting them, how they're doing, and how they're looking to the future. This shooting um, shattered our image of Monterey Park as a peaceful and quiet place, uh, a great place to raise your kids, a place that embraces diversity. Uh, it is a city that is 65% Asian, and uh, celebrations like this are very key to uh, the community. That's why uh, the Lunar New Year celebration was so joyous. Um, and it, the opening ceremony was only hours before the shooting occurred. There were thousands of people just a block away celebrating the Lunar New Year. Uh, but now we are in the process of recovering from this horrendous shooting and the healing has to start now. You mentioned just how many people were there to celebrate the Lunar New Year. As I understand it, I mean, tens of thousands of people come to this community for the Lunar New Year celebrations. Can you talk about the significance of something like this happening at such a special time? That is what uh, was so unbelievable. Uh, this was uh, a time which should have been very joyous, a time to return to normalcy after three years of being cooped up due to COVID. And then for the shooting to occur, just uh, tore a hole through our hearts. And um, it was also on the uh, end of this three-year struggle with anti-Asian hate. There have been 11,500 hate crimes and incidents that have occurred. And in fact, uh, for many people, including myself, when I heard there was a shooting, I thought that it was uh, an anti-Asian hate crime. Uh, it wasn't, but still, this terrible tragedy is something that uh, is affecting all of us. And Congresswoman, as you know, there will be folks who will offer up their, quote, thoughts and prayers. There will be folks who will try to pivot the discussion from what actually happened here, which was that somebody, uh, we don't know the motive yet, and I don't want to give this perpetrator any airtime, but somebody was able to get their hands on a weapon uh, that could cause a mass casualty event just like this one. Uh, and we rarely try to focus on that act. We, we talk about other things which are important, mental health, um, racism, but the fact of the matter is there are people with mental health issues all around the world. There are people who are struggling against the scourge of racism in every country on planet Earth, and yet they don't see the casualties, the mass casualties that we see in this country on a regular basis. Uh, what do you think needs to be done to address tragedies like this? And I know, you know you're working at the federal level, but what can you do with your partners at the local level to try and affect some change? Well, um there are many questions in my mind about the shooting. Uh, of course, his motive, uh, as well as whether he had a mental health uh, problem and whether he had a criminal record. But one of the biggest questions I have is how he was able to obtain these guns, not just one, but others. Did he obtain them legally or not? Actually, the gun that was wrestled away from him at uh, the Lai Lai Dance Studio uh, was an illegal weapon. Mm -hmm. And what this says is that there are far too many illegal weapons that are being purchased by people who should not have them. I suspect that this person may have had mental problems. If the background check was done properly, then he wouldn't have been able to obtain this. We know that the universal background check is the best way to make sure that guns are not in the hands of criminals and those with a history of mental health problems. Uh, but there are loopholes in our current system. And that is 
uh, a person can evade having a background check if they uh, purchase their guns through an online system or uh, they purchase it mm. uh, through private means, person to person, or at a gun show. Mm. And those loopholes have to close. You know, I learned this morning that police were on the scene within three minutes, yeah. which is incredibly fast. And still we had 20 people shot, 10 of them killed. It gives you an indication of just how much damage you can this do. sort of weapons can do in a very short period of time. And you know, Congresswoman, that you're going to hear people say, well, you know, if that was an illegal gun, you know, there are laws already on the books against that. And he wasn't supposed to In a state like California. It. Right, which exactly. Has tough gun laws. So, you know, what will tougher tougher laws do? What will tougher gun laws do? And what do you say? Well, he clearly obtained that second gun illegally. And had our background check systems been in place, it's quite possible he couldn't have it. Uh, so uh, yes, we have to make sure that there are more gun safety laws. This is so important for our community. We can't be living in America with a massive assault every week, nearly. Uh, just recently, we think of Buffalo, Uvalde, um, Club Q. These are happening far too frequently, far too often, and far too many people have these guns. It's unlike other countries in the world. Mm. Congresswoman, before we let you go, let me just ask you about, I know we don't have a lot of information yet on the victims because the families are still being notified, but. My sense is that uh, at a dance studio like this one, these are going to be grandmothers and grandfathers and aunties and uncles um, looking to just enjoy some time uh, dancing, um, celebrating the Lunar New Year. And, and that is sort of what breaks my heart, which is that for perhaps a lot of these individuals, they left countries, they left a, a life behind, or maybe they're a first generation American and their parents or grandparents left a life behind to seek better opportunities here in this country. And sadly, they meet their demise um, at the hands of a sick individual and a weapon. Um, can you just describe the community, the specific community that would be attending some of these dance studios, going to these dance studios, and how just tight knit everybody is in Monterey? Well, uh, these are uh, largely Asian immigrants who've come here uh, and um, have lived uh, in some cases a hard life. Uh, you know, it's it's not easy to come to another country and learn its language and culture. Uh, so they um, are able to let off steam by going to these ballroom dance studios. Uh, in this studio, you have, yes, generally older people, um, maybe in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. And they're getting exercise, they are having fun, they are uh, experiencing companionship, uh, they are learning steps. Uh, so yes, these are everyday people who are just simply enjoying themselves and letting off a little steam. Uh, and so to see that this is happening to just ordinary decent people is just so heartbreaking. Uh, Congresswoman uh, Judy Chu, thank you so much for spending some time with us. I imagine you're incredibly busy today, so we appreciate it. Thank you so much.